coming up to down the Wayne train. Hopefully it's going to be an FA Cup focused episode because first up we take on West Ham at London Stadium in the quarterfinals. And if we can win that, we'll then play the semi. Otherwise, just Newcastle in the Premier League. Let's see if we can make our first cup final of the save. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 29 of The Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM with Plymouth Argyle. I hope you're doing well and coming up today as I said first up, definitely taking on West Ham in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. If we can win that one, we'll come back and play the semis in that competition. Otherwise, we'll come back in a little while in the Premier League and take on Newcastle United instead. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, hopefully an FA Cup theme one, then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so or really are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but we'll play a couple of games off the back of yesterday's episode which did include the previous round in the FA Cup where we took on Hall City and also we picked up a massive win in the Premier League over Manchester United as well if you missed that one I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Thankfully, we are still inside of that top four. In fact, we've only just played the one game off the back of that Manchester United one, and it was quite a big one. You can see it there, a one-all draw at home against Tottenham Hotspur. This slightly disappointing because we did take a lead early in the second half through Alano Bando coming off the bench for a struggling Nikola Ilyev. So he's done quite well in his few appearances here so far at Plymouth Argyle, but unfortunately, Kulosevsky got an equaliser with 20 minutes left, and we do drop points there at home. A little bit frustrating off the back of that big win at Old Trafford, especially looking at the stats from that game, probably one that we should have held on to and picked up the three points, but thankfully we are still in third on the table, albeit Chelsea do get a chance to go above us with their game in hand, and Manchester United are only four points behind us, but thankfully still in a pretty good position to hopefully be making our way through to some Champions League football for next season, or at the very least, making sure we are in Europe in some form. But first up for us today, it's the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. We take on a West Ham team who recently our form against hasn't actually been too bad. I did think they were somewhat of a bogey team for us. But as you can see, last couple of times we've played them, we've won the home games. And last time we played them at London Stadium back in March of last year. In fact, it was the first time we played them in February in 2025. It was a draw the last time we played them earlier this season. That was a 3-2 defeat that you guys did see on camera. That one, a little bit frustrating. So the last time we played them, actually, they did beat us. So hopefully we can get some revenge for that first up. In today's episode, and things we've just played that one game off the back of yesterday, that one against Tottenham, where we unfortunately did drop those points. We can get stuck straight into the action today. There you can see one of the other quarterfinals that glamour tie, I think, in this round. Man United, they host Liverpool the day prior. Arsenal and Chelsea did go through, as you would expect. Hopefully we can do the same. But this is going to be a tough test for us, especially away from home so far. We've got a few home games in the FA Cup this season, but a couple of changes to our team for this game. There's a couple of tired players, and also Mike Cooper in goal. As per usual, the back four, though, is at full strength. The main changes do come on the wings. It's Morgan Whitaker out at right wing, and also Gutierrez does come back at left back. So that's a slight change. Wilson Esbrand was doing a good job, but these days Gutierrez... He is back to being able to handle the full game, so he can start there. Down that left-hand side does have a little bit of a link-up with Solawi. Hopefully, we can make the most of that for Kundo Farias and Balumi. Not quite on full green hearts going into this game, but apart from that, we're pretty much full strength for this one. Also, our cover on the bench are those centre-backs who can cover either side in Halsner and in Graves. So Graves can cover left-back and centre-back. On the other side, it will be Sebastian Halsner, but hopefully we can do a decent job here. But of course, the last time we played these guys, as you saw before, we did suffer defeat. Hopefully, we can get some revenge for that and make our way through to the final four of the FA Cup. Because rather for hilariously, we're actually the highest ranked team who might make their way through to that if Liverpool do get knocked out by Manchester United. But going up to the 20-minute mark of this game so far, nothing, albeit as I say that it is a corner of West Ham. JWP puts this one into the mix. We try and clear that one. Makes its way out to Danny Namaso, who rockets that one top right corner. Nothing Mike Cooper can do about that. And West Ham do take an early lead here at home. And hopefully, 
we can come back from this, but unfortunately, that's not the start we wanted. Ward Prowse tries to put this one near post. I think the Ilya heads it away, but Jared Bowen, first time pass back to Namaso, and a first time finish, which we just don't close him down on. Ilya tries to get back out there, can't quite stop it from making its way into the top right corner, but maybe chance for us here to reply immediately from the restart as there is a highlight, and we find Serginho Dest down that right hand side. Morgan took a nice ball for there for the Wayne train, tight angle. Not sure if he was trying to take on a shot there or tried to square it, but eventually off a deflection, it finds its way out to Solawi, but unfortunately that one goes well over the bar and we are still 1-0 down. It's not a great start for us here, albeit stats-wise, it's been pretty even. And now the train makes his way forward down this left-hand side, just inside the byline, plays that one back to Gutierrez, finally able to handle a full game, hopefully can perform as well as Wilson S. Brand did. Now a good chance there for Wayno, albeit from a tight angle again, potentially there. Could look to square that ball, but Ariola did actually get a touch on that. So it is going to be a corner here in our favor. Bischoff floats that one. Far post Whitaker does get his head on the end of it, but unfortunately it's a looping header and Ariola can claim that safely, albeit now we do put the pressure here on our opposition, albeit a bit of a loose pass there, which we do give the ball away from, but thankfully we get it back still inside of the West Ham final third. So Gino Des squares that one nicely. It finds its way towards the far post. Now Aliyev gets a shot off there, but apparently it took a deflection off of Walker Peters. So another chance for us here from a corner yet again. We go far post. Reese Williams gets absolutely cladded there from Josh Doig, but no penalty given that is interesting. But so far off back, you can see that opening goal. We have been on the front foot, but unfortunately are behind by one goal to nil. Hopefully we can get this back to all square at some stage before we go into the sheds and might make a few changes, in particular Nikola Ilyev on a 6.1. That is not a very good rating, but West Ham here might get a chance to make it 2-0. Jared Bowen with a really good curving effort. That one just on the wrong side of the post. A big chance there for West Ham to make it 2-0. And now a free kick to Ward Prowse. Cooper got nowhere near that one, but thankfully it does come off the crossbar. And it looks like we'll go into the sheds only 1-0 down. We could have potentially grabbed an equaliser and based on stats and XG, we probably should have. But West Ham lay in that half, did get chances to make it 2-0. So I think we'll take the 1-0 going into the second period. Good Johnson will come on for Ilyev on that poor rating. And also Balumi will come on for Whitaker. Not quite on a full green heart, but Whitaker is only on a 6.4. We'll tell the guys that we're actually playing decently enough, I feel like, in this game to be doing a bit better. Hopefully, that means they might respond a bit better than if we just let loose at them, like I can tend to do here with Plymouth Argyle, especially while we are up in the top half of the Premier League. And first highlight here of the second half is a free kick in our favour, Simon Som. It comes off the post, but thankfully off the underside of the crossbar, and Parola will put that one away. It's a simple tap-in for his first goal in a Plymouth Argyle. Stuart, the Italian international, recently got his first cap for the national team. And thankfully, early in the second half, we do grab a goal back off the back with a decent first half, especially off the back of that opening West Ham goal. That does feel somewhat justified, albeit like with West Ham's goal. A highlight here immediately from the restart, albeit poor pass there. And Sarawi can get that ball back for us. This is a chance for us here to actually grab a quick fire double. Good Johnson does really well there to keep hold of that ball. Nice ball forward to Balumi. Puts that one away in the top left corner, albeit the camera goes a little bit janky. So he might have been offside. We can't see from this angle what the assistant referee does say, but unfortunately our player's arms are not in the air celebrating, so it does get ruled off for offside, which is unfortunate because great work there from Good Johnson. And unfortunately, Balumi is just one stride offside. He probably would have got to that ball too with the angle from that Good Johnson pass, but unfortunately still won all, but certainly getting on the front foot here in the early stages of the second half. And so far, everyone out there on a decent ring as well. Now, Somnia clatters someone from behind, but thankfully, that's not a foul, which is a bit justified after in the first half. We did have a potential penalty not given, but we do get the ball back there. And now, Som, he is on it, plays that forward to the Wayne train. That's to make his way to the edge of the box. Unless it's a shot, but unfortunately, a bit too far out. And it does go over the bar. Still 1-0 here as we make our way into the last half hour. And now, it's a goal kick here to West Ham, not too sure, but it's immediately from that Wayne train shot, but West Ham, we put them under good pressure there with the high press, but unfortunately, now Namaso finds himself in quite a bit of space, the goal scorer, now Gomez 
back to Josh Doig, makes his way just inside the box, squares that one for Namaso, but thankfully someone blocks that good clearance there from Bischoff, and the Wayne train actually might get a chance there to do something on the counter-attack, big one-on-one -on -one chance, but great effort there from Ariola. he reads it early, but that's a massive chance for Wayno to grab a goal back in this one, we'll just see if we can cancel the shot that we did, if we'll see this corner, and thankfully that is the case, but now the Wayne train is down to a 6.4 big chance for him there, and unfortunately we can't find Williams from the subsequent corner, albeit Sorrelby tries to get a shot off there, but unfortunately Doig does clear that one away, albeit not very fast still on the attack, but unfortunately we can't make the most of that chance, and on a 6.4 we might bring on Damian Pizarro for the Wayne train to be fair as form this season, has actually been a little bit better than Wayno's, albeit that might be due to all the injuries that our main man has picked up the New Zealand striker and now making our way into the last 20 minutes of this game. A couple of players are down to Red Hearts. So Rowie, Som, and Bischoff will definitely take off here. Bischoff or Buckley, but to be fair, the other two are actually on green ratings. So I think because of that, we might leave them out there and see if we need to save that final substitution for a player who is on a slightly worse rating than the two who are doing a decent job. And as we say that, Miguel Gutierrez, he picks up a yellow card, so Jacob Graves can come on for him late. Hopefully, that still means we get something going forward from him at left back. Of course, he should be used to playing in that position because he did it for us most of last season. But now inside the last 10 minutes of this game, still one all but feels like. We have the team here more likely to score the second goal based on our second half performance. Now, Parola picks up a yellow card. This one might be on its way. I think it goes to penalties at this stage. Don't think now we go to replays, but we were on the attack there in the final third, but unfortunately, interception there, but thankfully, long pass forward there looking. I think that was for Kudaya. We cut it out now. Graves over for good. Johnson squares it for Damian Pizarro off of the bench with only three minutes left and extra time. Now, off the back of that, we're just going to cancel the changes because I was about to encourage our guys. Instead, we'll praise off the back of this goal, which will hopefully get awarded, and thankfully that time it is a now. Time for us to lower the tempo and start time wasting quite frequently, so hopefully West Ham cannot come back here in front of their home fans. Also, we might even drop back and play a low block for the last couple of minutes of this match, but that is a big goal off of the bench for Damian Pizarro. Unfortunately, doing that does mean we do not see the replay, but thankfully we are going through to the semis of the FA Cups, that's what's going to be coming up second in today's episode, and I do think we deserve that win, somehow found ourselves 1-0 down at halftime, but thankfully Parole with his first goal for the club, nice and early in the second half, albeit it was a tap in, and then Pizarro off the bench early on in injury time, gets on the end of a fizz bin ball from Good Johnson, and puts it away, beats Ariola, who up until that point had a pretty good game, especially stopping a big chance that Wayne did have earlier before we did bring on Pizarro, but thankfully we get some revenge on West Ham for that loss in the Premier League a couple of episodes ago, and pick up a 2-1 win, we'll come back shortly and see who we get drawn against in the semi-finals. And we are back about to take part in the draw for the semi-finals of the FA Cup, and here you can see the results from the quarters, as you saw before Chelsea and Arsenal went through quite comfortably over championship clubs, albeit Arsenal did have to go two extra time. The big news, the one team who were above us on the Premier League table in Liverpool, they got bumped 4-0 at Old Trafford. That is an interesting result, so it does mean it's Chelsea, Arsenal or Manchester United that we can play in the semi-finals of the FA Cup. We'll see where we end up coming out in this one. First up, it is Arsenal and it will be a London derby as they take on Chelsea, and that means that we take on Manchester United. Interesting to see that we've actually ended up being drawn as the home team in that game. Not that it matters too much, because of course, for the semi-finals, it is going to be played at Wembley. But that is what we've got coming up next in today's episode. It's not till a month away, though, so we're going to have to get through a fair bit of Premier League action before then, and recap that. Hopefully, can keep ourselves solidly inside of that top four. But while we were waiting for this draw to take place, we have had our youth intake for this season at Plymouth Argyle, and to be fair, it's another pretty good one in terms of having some high potential players, another good goalkeeper here, and Adam Lindley with that five-star potential and one-star current ability. Not too sure at this stage if these players with enough time to make their way into the first team before the end 
of this save, but still, that's a high potential player, and the same is the case for Oli Bona. To be fair, with one and a half star current ability, he might be just a little bit more promising as a ball wing midfielder, albeit he does play a bit further forward than the DM role, which we do currently use those players in here at Plymouth Argo, and also down in the top talents, there is a four and a half star potential player in Harry Carney, who is a left winger, and also we have down there Tudley Gubbins as well, who is a right winger, albeit might be getting trained as a right back. So a couple of good young prospects there coming for our youth intake this year at Plymouth Argo, but the main news is we'll be coming back shortly to hopefully double up against Manchester United, and this time knock them out in the semis of the FA Cup. And we are back about to take on Manchester United in the semi-finals of the FA Cup, trying to make our first big cup final here at Plymouth Argo. And if we do, that will be against Arsenal, who did defeat Chelsea after extra time. But before then, a bit of a recap of what's happened in the Premier League off the back of that win in the quarters over West Ham. And unfortunately, our minds just might be on the FA Cup a little bit too much. We'll get rid of that friendly, which we did play during the course of an international break. but. We first took on Southampton away from home. I thought this was a game that we should be winning, but unfortunately, Southampton here did grab the first goal early in the second half through Shea Adams. Thankfully, we did grab an equaliser with 20 minutes left, but despite the fact that was Southampton's only shot on target, we do drop points there away from home. And our second draw in a row in the Premier League off the back of that disappointing prior result against Tottenham, so that was not ideal. And then coming into this one, we did play two tough games against Newcastle and Arsenal and lost them both. This first one in particular, really frustrating as it was at Ashton Gate. We did grab an equaliser off the back of a Sven Botman goal through Nicola Iliev, but unfortunately, just before halftime, Kieran Trippier did get a winner there for Newcastle United. We lose at home, which is definitely not what I was expecting. Albeit the fact that we had to play in white here at home because Newcastle wore their green Saudi outfit was a little bit interesting. Maybe that was the difference maker, but still, that was a 2-1 loss. And off the back of that, unfortunately, couldn't get the job done on what could be a preview to the FA Cup final, hopefully, as we lost 2-1 at the Emirates. Arsenal so far, a team that we do struggle against in this save, but to be fair, Arsenal this time, definitely the best team in this game, even if we did go 1-0 up just before halftime. Through good Johnson, unfortunately, right off the restart, but Kyo Saka did grab a goal back. And then we gave away a penalty, and he put that one away. So Arsenal do escape there with a 2 1 win. Definitely deserved, but the scoreline a lot closer than you would expect with those match stats. So it does mean we've only picked up one point in the Prem off the back of that quarterfinal win over West Ham in the FA Cup. And we are no longer inside of the top four. Manchester United are four points above us, and Chelsea have well and truly cleared away from us as well, albeit we do have a game in hand now. Aston Villa, Arsenal and West Ham are quite hot on our heels. So it would be quite nice here if we could beat Manchester United and make our way through to that FA Cup final just to give us an extra security blanket if we could pick up that trophy that would mean we'd at least get Europa League football for next season. But hopefully we can start to pick up some more wins off the back of this upcoming game when hopefully the FA Cup will be a little bit less of a distraction for a little while and also we play some more winnable games against the likes of Brentford, Crystal Palace and Brighton all in the bottom half of the table before things get very interesting in our last three games at Chelsea and Liverpool and also hosting Aston Villa. That could be a very interesting run home, but hopefully they will include an FA Cup final off the back of this Manchester United semi. Of course, we played them in yesterday's episode and picked up our first win at Old Trafford by a scoreline of two goals to one. So we come to this one with a touch of confidence, albeit that might have been deteriorated a little bit off the back of those results against Newcastle and Arsenal. But hopefully we can do the job here. Our players might be a bit too focused here on the FA Cup. I have seen it happen in other people's saves. Hopefully we can turn around that poor recent form and upset the Red Devils for a second time in a row. Compared to that first game that we played today, Wilson S. Bram back at left back and also Whitaker at right wing and also Good Johnson at striker. That is because both of them doing better than the other options currently in their positions. You can see the average ratings of Bulumi and of Iliev. We're going to go here with the hot hands in those two who come into this team, but otherwise we're at full strength and hopefully can do a decent job here for our first appearance at Wembley 
in this save and make our first cup final. They are asking us here in the media about our poor form off the back of those recent results. We're not doing too well off the back of that win over Manchester United and also that one over West Ham in particular. Hopefully, we can turn it around here in the FA Cup and then try and get back on track in the Premier League. Otherwise, might be quite a bit riding on an FA Cup final in tomorrow's episode. But there's our team and Manchester United. You can see why they've gone above us on the Premier League table. They are in red hot form, albeit did look right there. Had a couple of first team options that they'd usually be starting against us on the bench. So maybe they're not taking the FA Cup quite as seriously as you would expect them to. But first highlight here in this game is in favour of the Red Devils. It's at Wembley, but we are listed as the home team, which is interesting, seeing as Man United to get drawn out of the hat first. Now, Anthony there with a shot. Thankfully, it does get blocked, and Wayno does cover that one. Now, Cooper pumps this one deep. Good Johnson, good work from him, as you'd expect, and does win the hero. Now, Sarawi gets the ball, starts to make his way forward, but unfortunately, Dallow there gets it back for Man United. It finds its way to Ferran Torres. Interesting to see him in a Man United shirt. Now, not too sure there what Sarawi's doing, but thankfully didn't connect. Now, Mason Mount plays that one forward to Joe Willock, but thankfully the flag's up from the assistant for the Newcastle United low knee, which is a very interesting move for a club like Manchester United, but thankfully he is indeed offside. That one won't count, and it stays nil all here coming up to the 10-minute mark. We'll just see how close this was, and indeed he was a mile offside. So still nil all coming up to the 10-minute mark here and our first visit to Wembley, where hopefully we can earn ourselves an FA Cup final against Arsenal. And now just going past the 15-minute mark, it is a goal kick here, but the Wayne train absolutely robs that one from Lissandro Martinez. Off the back of that, we'll just cancel, because I did encourage going in to that highlight. Now it's time for us to praise that is shocking work at the back from Lissandro Martinez. Just goes sleepy on the ball. The Wayne train just swings his foot for it and beats the goalkeeper there for Manchester United, albeit you can't blame him for that. The Wayne train just pounces on the butcher, butchering work there at the back, and we go 1-0 up here, just past the 15-minute mark, albeit off the restart, a highlight for United, but thankfully Wilson S. Brand does get that ball back for us, the low knee from Man City. Hopefully he'll be up for this game against the rival club of his parent, but we are now looking to play out from the back. United, to be fair, doing a decent job here of pressing us, but eventually we do find Serginho Dest, but thankfully a tackle there does find its way to good Johnson Sarawi. Nice ball forward there for the Icelandic striker. He picks up his 11th of the season. It's a quick fire double, and that mistake from Lissandro Martinez has put Manchester United here in a bit of bother 2 0 early on in this FA Cup semi. And thankfully, we might be a bit more focused on this competition currently than the Premier League, which is not actually what I want because I do think it's a bit easier to qualify through league performance for Europe next season. But what a double that is from our two strikers to make it 2-0 nice and early in this game. Up until that point, Man United were the team who were on the front foot. Hopefully we can kick on or potentially just make sure we're nice and solid at the back and make our way through to our first cup final here at Plymouth Argyle. But now at the half hour mark in United, they are on the attack, albeit Ganacho there, strays offside. That was a bit of a waste of time highlight, but thankfully still up by two goals to nil, despite the fact that United, in terms of overall stats in this game, do look like they are the more dominant team. As Serginho Dest picks up a yellow card, maybe he'll be coming off at half time for Sebastian Hausner. Now, poor pass there, and that was Sarawi who gets on the end of that one, receives it back from Good Johnson. Those two were linked up nicely for that previous goal. Now, Bischoff, nice flick there, I think, for Sarawi. It falls back there. I'm not too sure who that was at the far post, but it flicks on to Good Johnson, who beats the United goalkeeper, beats Varane in the air, and United are an absolute mess at the back here in this game, and we make it 3-0, and hopefully that's a big enough cushion to be going through to the final. Whitaker, I think, there gets his head on the end of that one, and Good Johnson puts it away. We'll just there get just to ease off tackles, because now... I think we can definitely do that. Just nothing stupid before halftime with this 3-0 lead. And that is a very good first half from us here at Plymouth Argyle. To be fair, we have just been capitalizing on some really poor mistakes from Manchester United. But thankfully, we've done that. And we are 3-0 up in this FA Cup semi. Just one change there at halftime. Sebastian Hausner can come on for the yellow-carded Serginho Dest. That should actually make us 
a bit more solid at the back because Hausner is more of a center back than a right back. But we're definitely going to tell the guys here they're doing brilliantly and hopefully can keep it up in the second half, which will get underway with that 3 0 lead. Interesting to see Casemiro will come on for Mason Mount, but about five minutes into the second half, and so far United not doing a lot, which is fine by me. And it's a highlight here first up for us. A throw-in right on the halfway line. Wayno plays that one back to Reese Williams. Now Hausner, the fresh legs here for us at Plymouth Argo. Wayno makes his way down that right-hand side. Nice ball in for Good Johnson. Looking for a hat-trick, but that is a big save there from the Man United goalkeeper to keep it out. Still 3-0, but a chance for us here from a set piece. And we should be lethal from these with all the height we have in this team today. The ball finds its way out to Sarawi. Now Reese Williams plays that one back to Parola and the highlight does end good chance there for good Johnson but unfortunately top save there from the Manchester United goalkeeper to keep it at 3-0 and we now make our way past the hour mark and now some players are going down to red hearts and I think in this situation we can play things safe and just take those guys off so first off Facundo Farias on for Sarawi who to be fair very good in that first half and also John Buckley can come on for Tom Bischoff just make sure we've got fresh legs out there for the remainder of this game, albeit off the back of that, it's a corner to Manchester United. Rafael Varane will get that off the back of a clearance and Dallow there with a shot, but thankfully Mike Cooper comes up with a really good save without being sighted on that too much, I'd imagine, with quite a few defenders of ours being in the way of that. So thankfully, still 3-0 and United here look to play out from the back, but thankfully Hausner makes the most of that loose touch by a Manchester United attacker down that left-hand side. We now play that one back to Mike Cooper yet again. Reese Williams starts to make his way forward, although it's a poor pass. Gets blocked in for Torres. Can put that one away. I think this will be a goal, albeit we are waiting here for a VAR check. Otherwise, that's shocking from Reese Williams. But thankfully, we get away with it. It might just be our day here at Wembley, and we might be going through to an FA Cup final. The ruling, I suppose, is that it took that deflection off the United player. And that Ferran Torres was offside, but still, that looked a bit debatable. And now, we're going to try and just give them this goal, because a poor pass there from the subsequent free kick. But thankfully, Som wins that one down that right-hand side of ours. Now, Whitaker plays that one forward to the Wayne train. Good work from him there to yet again find Whitaker. He's got options here inside him as he makes his way in the box. Simon Som, from a tight angle, gets some help from the post, but puts that one away. We make it 4-0, despite the fact it looked like down the other end, we were trying to give Manchester United a goal to get back into it off the back of that. Now Morgan Whitaker is down to a red heart. Balumi can come on for him, but that's surely the goal to see us through to our first ever FA Cup final here at Plymouth Argyle. And Morgan Whitaker definitely helped set that one up, as did the Wayne train and Simon Som from a tight angle. Just gets that one in the back of net 4-0 with only 20 minutes left. Surely that's a big enough advantage for us to now just take a big deep breath and make sure everything is going to be okay. And now Simon Soms down to a red heart. We'll bring on Adam Randall for him with our last substitution. Definitely leaving on the Wayne train because he's playing quite well. Now Facundo Farias makes his way inside the box. Big chance there, but a good save from the Man United goalkeeper. Who'd be fears not having that bad a game so far. Being let down a bit by his superstar defence. But now a corner good Johnson on the end of that one. We'll put it away. For a FA Cup semi hat trick, the Icelandic striker off the back of this might be getting a lot more game time throughout the rest of the season. 5 0 over Manchester United. This is brilliant. And we are going to return here to Wembley in tomorrow's episode and try and lift our first major trophy of the save, albeit now we're down the other end for a corner to United. But thankfully, Wilson S. Brand will head that one away, albeit Bidstrup finds himself in a fair bit of space. From a tight angle, Reese Williams blocks that ball into the mix of it. Joe Willock will put it away this time. Of course, had a goal in the first half rolled out for offside. We will just play things safe here, lower the tempo, and also go a bit time wasty and slow the pace down. Just want to make sure that Man United don't do anything too screwy inside of the last 15 minutes. We blew a 5 0 lead. Not sure I'll be back for any more games in this series because that would be a bit too embarrassing. That would be the bottle job of all bottle jobs, especially as we're currently trying to do that in the Premier League for our European aspirations for next season. But thankfully, so far, things just cooled down off the back of that lone goal, which Manchester United have scored now inside the last five minutes of this one. We are still up 
by five goals to one. So I think we're going to be fine here and making our way through to a final against Arsenal in tomorrow's episode. So it does mean it's going to be an interesting one. If we can beat Arsenal, obviously, guaranteed some European football. Otherwise, the Premier League results are going to be quite important. And it will depend on where Arsenal also might be finishing inside of the top six or seven. If we finish seventh and Arsenal aren't inside the top seven, we might yet again miss out on European football. But hopefully off the back of that performance, we might have a chance of winning that FA Cup final. If we can put that out again, we should be in with a strong shout. That is one of our best wins so far here at Plymouth Argyle up there with the freshening of Liverpool at home park last season. That is a big result at Wembley. We're through to a final against Arsenal off the back of a 5-1 win over Manchester United. So a massive result for us there, second up in today's episode, we win both the quarter and the semi in the FA Cup, and that does mean a tie against Arsenal tomorrow, where hopefully we can lift that competition for the first time, so a big episode to end the third season of the save coming up tomorrow on the channel, Good Johnson, making himself a potential hero here at Plymouth Argyle with that hat trick to slay the Red Devils, but if you enjoyed today's episode, those two wins in the FA Cup, despite the fact around that, our form in the Prem went a bit haywire, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow. Hopefully, we can continue this form now against Brentford, Crystal Palace, and Brighton, but the last four games of the season, they could be interesting. We'll probably come back for the last two, because the FA Cup final is actually before our last game in the Premier League, so first up tomorrow, it might be the final against Arsenal, hopefully that might just make sure that if it's not already locked in, that we do have some European football for next season, and then we take on the team currently in a title fight with Manchester City, and we'll see how much is rowing on that game if we do need to pick up points to make Europe for next season, especially off the back of whatever the result is in that FA Cup final. So we'll come back tomorrow and wrap up this third season of the save, and it will include an FA Cup final. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.